Hi, and welcome to Berry Aftercare. I am Dr. Connie Stapleton, and I've been honored to be able to share these podcasts, these videos with you over the past year. And I continue to do so into the new year, and we will enjoy new topics. I'm changing the format just a little. I'll have some interviews with other people at times. I'm going to do some book reviews. But today, as we wrap up this year, this will be the last mind prep video and podcast for this year. And I'd like to just wish you a very, very happy holiday season and a really great new year. Today, I've got something special to share with you. It may be a little bit longer today. I'm not sure. And the reason I'm not sure is because I am literally taking the time to read a book to you today. And it's such an amazing book and it's perfect timing given the season that we are in. The book is called The Pres The Present. The original version was called The Precious Present. And I believe the author, Spencer Johnson, who's an amazing author, everything I've read by Spencer Johnson has been amazing. Short, brilliance, all kinds of good wisdom in these these short books. I would really recommend that you read them. Anyway, today I'm going to read you the present. And I would ask you to accept this as a present for me this year. And you may want to share this present with others because it's such a beautiful story. And it has such a wise lesson for all of us because we live crazy busy lives. And even though the holiday season is meant to reconnect us with people we love and to take time and celebrate the greater meaning of life and the world. It's a really busy time. So I'd like to share this with you today to give you some perspective and help you slow down a little bit. So listen to this as many times as you'd like and share it with those you love. All right, here we go. The, the Present by Spencer Johnson. Once there was a boy who listened to a wise old man and thus began to learn about the present. The old man and the boy had known each other for more than a year and enjoyed talking together. One day, the old man said, it is called simply the present because of all the gifts you might receive. You will find this present is the most valuable one of all. Why is it so valuable? The boy asked. The old man explained, because when you receive this gift, you enjoy things more and you are able to do whatever you do better each day. It is the one thing that doesn't change in changing times. You can rely on it to make you happier. Wow, the little boy exclaimed although not fully understanding. I hope somebody gives me the present someday. Maybe I'll get it for my birthday. Then the boy ran off to play. The old man smiled. He wondered how many birthdays would pass before the boy would realize the value of the present. The old man enjoyed watching the boy play in the neighborhood he often saw a smile on the youngster's face and heard him laughing as he swung from a nearby tree. The boy was happy and completely engaged in whatever he was doing. He was a joy to behold. As the boy grew older, the old man couldn't help but notice the way the boy worked. On Saturday mornings, he would occasionally observe his young friend mowing the lawn across the street. The boy actually whistled while he worked. He seemed to be happy no matter what he was doing. One morning, the boy saw the old man and remembered what the old man had told him about the present. The boy knew all about presents, like the bicycle he got for his last birthday and the gifts he'd found under the tree on Christmas morning. But as he thought more about it, he realized that the joy of these presents didn't last very long. He wondered, what is so special 
about the present. What could make it so much better than any other present? What could make me happier and better at doing things? Wanting answers to his questions, he crossed the street to ask the old man. He asked what a young boy might ask. Is the present a magic wand that can make all my wishes come true? No, the old man answered with a laugh. The present is not about magic or wishing. Unsure of the old man's answer, the boy returned to his work mowing the lawn, still wondering about the present. As he grew older, the boy continued to wonder about the present. If it has nothing to do with wishing, could it have something to do with going away to someplace special? Did it mean traveling to a foreign land where everything looked different? The people, the clothes they wore, the language they spoke, the houses they lived in, even their money. How would he get there? He went to see the old man. Is the present, he asked, a time machine that I could get in and go anywhere I wanted? No, the old man replied. When you receive the present, you no longer spend your time dreaming about being somewhere else. In a world where it seems like too many things are changing too quickly, the present is the one reliable thing you can count on. Time passed and the boy grew into his teens. He became more and more dissatisfied. He had hoped he would enjoy things more as he grew older, but he always seemed to want more. More friends, more things, more excitement. In his impatience, he dreamed about what awaited him out in the world. His thoughts drifted back to his talks with the old man, and he found himself thinking more and more about the promise of the present. He approached the old man again and asked, is the present something that will make me rich? Yes, in a way it can, the old man told him. The present can lead you to many kinds of riches, but its true value is not measured in gold or money alone. The teenager was confused. You told me earlier that when you receive the present, you enjoy your life more. Yes, the old man said, and you are more effective so you can do things better and that makes you more successful. What do you mean by being more successful? The teenager wanted to know. Being more successful means getting more of what you need, the old man said, whatever you think is important. So I get to decide what success is for me? The teenager asked. Yes, we all do, the old man said. And we may change what we think success is at different times in our lives. For you now, it may be having a better relationship with your parents getting better grades in school or doing better in sports or getting a part-time job after school and getting a raise because you do the job better. Later, it may mean being more productive and prosperous or feeling more peaceful and better about yourself, no matter what happens. That's a special kind of success. What is it for you? The teen asked. The old man laughed. At this phase of my life, it means laughing more often, loving more deeply, and being of greater service. The teen responded, and you say the present helps you do all of this? Absolutely, the old man exclaimed. Well, I've never heard anyone else talk about such a present. I'm beginning to think it doesn't exist. The old man replied, oh, it exists, but I'm afraid you don't understand it yet. You already know what the present is. You already know where to find it. And you already know how it can make you happier and more successful. You knew it best when you were younger. 
you have simply forgotten. The old man inquired, when you were younger mowing the lawn, was that a good time or a bad time for you? A good time, the once little boy said. What made it good? The old man asked. The teenager thought for a moment and said, because I loved what I was doing. I did such a good job that our neighbors asked me to cut their lawns as well. In fact, I made quite a lot of money for a kid my age. And what did you think about as you worked? The old man inquired. When I was mowing the lawn, I thought about mowing the lawn. I thought about how I'd mow the grass through the tricky areas and around the obstacles. I thought about how many lawns I was able to finish in an afternoon and how I could work so well. But mostly, I just concentrated on cutting the grass in front of me. He spoke about mowing the grass in a tone that it made, like, that it, made it sound like the answer should be obvious. The old man leaned forward and said slowly, exactly. And that is what, and that is why you enjoyed it. You were happier and more effective at what you were doing that day. Unfortunately, the teenager did not take the time to reflect on what he had just heard. Instead, he became more impatient. If you really want me to be happier, the teenager said, why don't you just tell me what the present is and where to find it? The old man volleyed back. Yes, the teen demanded. I would like to, the old man responded, but I do not have such power. No one can find the present for someone else. The present is a gift you give to yourself. Only you have the power to discover what it is, the old man explained. The teen was disappointed with the answer and left the old man. As the teen grew into a young man, he resolved to find the present on his own. He read magazines, newspapers, and books. He talked with his friends and family. He searched the internet. He even traveled far and wide, seeking answers from everyone he met. But no matter how hard he searched, he could not find anyone who was able to tell him what the present was. After a while, he became so tired and discouraged that he simply gave up his search. Eventually, the young man took a job working for a local company. To those around him, he seemed to be doing well enough, but he felt that something was missing. When he was at work, he thought about where else he might be enjoying work more, or he thought about what he would do when he got home. His mind often wandered at meetings and even in conversations with his friends. During meals, he was often distracted and unaware of the taste of his food. In his job, he dealt adequately with his projects, but he knew he could do better. He knew in his heart he was not giving all he had, but he didn't feel what he did really mattered. After a while, the young man realized he had become unhappy. He thought he worked hard and that he did what he was expected to do. He usually arrived on time and felt he put in a full day's work. He had hoped to be promoted. Perhaps that would make him happier. Then one day, he learned he had been passed over for a promotion he thought he was entitled to. The young man became angry. He didn't understand why he had been passed over for the promotion. He tried his best not to let his anger show as it was not welcomed at work. However, he could not let his anger go and it began to consume him. As the young man's anger increased, the quality of his work decreased. To those around him, he tried to act like the promotion didn't matter, but deep down inside, he began to doubt himself. 
Do I have what it takes to succeed? He wondered. The young man's personal life wasn't much better. He hadn't been able to get over breaking up with his girlfriend. He worried over whether he would ever find true love and have a family of his own. He found himself floundering. His life seemed to be a series of loose ends, unfinished projects, and unattained goals and dreams. He knew that he was not living up to the potential he'd shown when he was younger. Every day, the young man came home from work a little more tired and disappointed. He never seemed satisfied with what he was doing, but he did not know what to do to change that. He thought about his youth and recalled the days when life seemed simpler. He thought about the words of the old man and the promise of the present. He knew he was not handling the unexpected changes he faced at work or in his life. He was not as happy or as successful as he wanted to be. Perhaps, he thought, I shouldn't have abandoned my search for the present. It had been a long time since he had spoken to the old man. He was embarrassed about how badly things were going for him and was reluctant to go back and ask for help. Finally, however, he was so dissatisfied with his work and life that he knew he had to talk to the old man. The old man was pleased to see him. He immediately noticed the young man's lack of energy and obvious unhappiness. Concerned, he encouraged the young man to tell him what was on his mind. The young man described his earlier frustrating attempts to find the present and how he had given up his search for it. He talked about his current troubles. But to the young man's surprise, things didn't seem so bad in the old man's presence. The young man and the old man had a wonderful time talking together and laughing. The young man realized how much he liked to be with the old man. He felt happier and more energetic in his presence. He wondered why the old man seemed more alive than most other people he knew. What was it that made him so special? He said to the old man, I feel so good on the days I am with you. Does it have something to do with the present? It has everything to do with it, the old man answered. The young man said, I wish I could find the present, and finding it today wouldn't be too soon. The old man laughed and said, in order to find the present for yourself, think of the times when you were happier and more effective, times when you were more focused and felt more successful. You already know where to find the present. You're just not aware of it, he continued. When you stop trying so hard, you'll find it easier to discover. In fact, it will become obvious. Then the old man suggested, why don't you take some time away from your regular routine and let the answer come to you? Following the old man's suggestion, the young man accepted a friend's offer to spend some time at his cabin in the mountains. Alone in the woods, the young man found things moved at a slower pace and life looked different. He took long walks and reflected on his life. Why isn't my life more like the old man's, he wondered. The young man had learned that while the old man was modest, he had been very successful in the world. He had started at the bottom of a highly respected organization and had risen to the very top and he had helped the community face a great many changes. The old man had a strong and loving family and many loyal friends who often came to see him. He had a wonderful sense of humor and a wisdom others enjoyed and respected. Most of all, there was a calm about him that the young man had rarely encountered. The young man smiled. 
and he has the youthful energy of someone half his age. The old man was clearly the happiest and most successful person he had ever met. So what was the present that gave the old man so many good qualities? As the young man walked for miles around the lake, he reflected on what he knew about the present. It is a gift that you give to yourself. He'd known it best when he was younger. He'd simply forgotten it. It was the one thing that doesn't change in a changing world. However, his mind drifted back to his failures. He remembered exactly where he was when he found out he didn't get the coveted promotion. It was as if it had happened yesterday. He was still angry. Then he noticed it was growing dark and he hurried back to the cabin. Once inside, he lit a fire to ward off the evening chill and noticed something he hadn't seen before. As he stared at the fire, he became aware of the cabin's great fireplace for the first time. It was made of large and small stones. A minimum of mortar held one stone to the next. Someone had very carefully chosen, chiseled, and perfectly placed each stone. Now that he was aware of it, he appreciated and enjoyed what had been right in front of him all along. Whoever had built the fireplace was more than a mason. He was an artist. As the young man marveled at how extraordinarily well-built the fireplace was, he thought about how the mason must have felt as he worked. He must have spent a significant amount of time completely focused on the job before him. It was clear the mason's thoughts had not wandered or strayed often. The work was that good. It was unlikely that he had been spending too much time thinking about a past love or that night's dinner, nor could too many of his thoughts have raced on to what he would be doing when he was finished or what he could have been doing that he might have enjoyed more. The young man could tell by looking at the masonry masterpiece that it was obvious the mason had succeeded. He must have had many moments when he concentrated on nothing else but the task at hand. And as a result, he enjoyed his work more. What was it the old man had said? To find the present. Think of those days when you were happier and more effective and feeling more successful. The young man recalled talking with the old man about mowing lawns when he was a boy. He remembered how he had focused on cutting the grass and had not let anything else distract him. When you are fully engaged in what you are doing, your mind doesn't wander. You enjoy life and you are happier and more effective. You are intent only on what is happening at that moment. And that focus and concentration leads to your success. He realized that he had not felt that way for a long time about working or anything else. He spent too much time being upset about the past or worried about the future. The young man gazed at the inside of the cabin. He stared again into the fire. At that moment, he wasn't thinking about the past, and he wasn't anxious about what might happen in the future. He simply appreciated where he was and what he was doing. Then he smiled. He realized he felt good. He was simply enjoying what he was doing. He enjoyed being in the present moment in a rush, it hit him, of course. He knew what the present was, what it had always been, what it is right now. The present is not the past. It is not the future. 
The present is the present moment. The present is right now. The young man broke into a smile. It was so obvious. He took in a deep breath and relaxed. He looked around the cabin and appreciated it in a whole new way. He went outside and saw the silhouette of the trees against the night sky and the snow atop the distant mountains. He saw the moon's early reflection on the lake and heard the birds' late evening song. He was now aware of so many things that had been right in front of him all along, but he had not seen or felt them before. Now he felt more peaceful and happier than he had felt in a long time. He didn't feel like a failure. The more the young man thought about the present, the more sense it made. Being in the present means focusing on what is happening right now. It means appreciating the gifts you are offered each moment in the day. It occurred to him that whenever he was in the present, he was more aware and focused on whatever he was doing. He was more like the masonry artist who had built the great stone fireplace. Now he realized what the old man had been trying to tell him since he was a boy. The next morning, the young man awoke refreshed. He could hardly wait to go and tell the old man what he had discovered. As he dressed for the day, he focused often on the present moment and was amazed at how much more energy he had. He made notes about what he wanted to do when he got back. He smiled as he realized he could become more effective in his job. Amazing the difference a day made. He remembered how he had been the night before. He made his discovery when he was focused on where he was and what he was doing right then and there. He was thinking about nothing else. He was glad he had come to the mountains to think, and it had helped to be on his own. He reminded himself to be in the present right now. He took in a deep breath and regained a sense of peace about him. He thought, it's amazing how simple it is and how fast it works. Later, he frowned and asked himself, could the present really be that simple? After all, isn't life complicated? Things certainly seemed complicated at work. He had some doubts. But for now, he returned to the present moment, appreciated all that it held, held and smiled. Now he knew what the old man had meant. The present moment didn't change. Changes only happen in the future, in the next moment. Maybe the present was something he could rely on in changing times. But as he prepared to leave the cabin, he still had several questions. How does being in the present work when the situation you are in is not as relaxing as staying in a quiet mountain cabin? It is one thing to be in the present when you are in a good situation, but quite another to be in a bad situation. How do you enjoy the present then? And what, if anything, is the importance of the past or the future. As he journeyed toward the old man, he realized he had many questions he wanted to ask him. Then he reminded himself to come back into the present. He became more aware of what was right at that moment. He began to enjoy who he was and where he was. He enjoyed the present being. The moment the old man saw the young man approaching with a wide smile and clear look in his eyes, the old man called out, you look like someone who has found the present. I have, the young man exclaimed. The old man beamed. He knew the young man would find his way. They both enjoyed the moment.
Then the old man asked, tell me, how did it happen? Well, I found myself feeling happier and realized that I wasn't thinking about what had happened to me in the past. And I wasn't feeling anxious about what might happen to me in the future. All of a sudden, the obvious occurred to me. The present, the gift you give yourself, is just that, the present moment. I see now that being in the present means focusing on what is right now. That is true, the old man said, and in two ways. The young man was not listening. He continued talking. I was in a good situation when I found the present. I was in my friend's mountain cabin. Then he asked hesitantly. I was wondering, how does being in the present help when you're in a bad situation? The old man responded with a question. When you became aware of the present, were you thinking about what was right or wrong? at that time. I was thinking about what was right, even though there were still some things that were going wrong. I knew I was in a beautiful place and I was enjoying the quiet time. The old man said, consider this, even in the most difficult situations, when you focus on what is right in the present moment, it makes you happier today. And it gives you the needed energy and confidence to deal with what is wrong. What the old man said made sense. So being in the present means focusing on what is right now. And the young man added, it also means focusing on what is right now. Yes, the old man said exactly. The young man thought about it more. You know what makes sense? When I'm in a bad situation, I usually focus on what's wrong, and that gets me down and discouraged. Many people do that. In reality, most situations are a mix of good and bad, right and wrong. It depends on how you look at them. The more you focus on what is right, the more effective you are today, and the more successful you become. The more you look at what is wrong, the old man said, the less energy and confidence you have. That's why when you find yourself in a bad situation, it's important to look for what is right, even if it's hard to find. Then appreciate it and build on it. The more you appreciate what is right at the moment, the happier you are. You become more relaxed And it is easier then to stay in the present and enjoy it. The young man said, what if the present is very painful? Like experiencing the loss of a loved one. Pain, the old man offered, is the difference between what is and what you want it to be. Pain in the present, like everything else, is constantly changing. It will come and go. When you stay fully in the present and have felt the pain and feel drained by it, you can begin to look for what is right and build on it. The young man began to write notes to help him remember what he was discovering. He said, why do I get the feeling that what I have learned so far is just the tip of the iceberg, and that there is a lot more beneath the surface. The old man said, because you have just begun to appreciate what is waiting out there for you to discover. He offered, since you have found the present on your own and seem keen to know more, I am happy to share what I know with you. The young man said he would appreciate it. So the old man continued, it is important to experience painful situations and learn from them, he said, rather than try to distract yourself 
with something else. Being in the present means tuning out distractions and paying attention to what is important now. You create your own present by what you give your attention to today. The young man said, so even in difficult situations, I need to tune out the unimportant distractions that keep me from being in the present? You can take examples from your own life, the old man said. You said earlier that you were having difficulties at work and in your relationship. You might want to ask yourself, was I often distracted at work or did I usually pay full attention to what was important then? Think about your life outside of work. How present were you when you were with your sweetheart? Was she important enough for you to focus your wholehearted attention on her when you were together? In a relationship, you need to focus on the whole person. By being more aware of their good and bad qualities, you can address potential problems instead of being sidetracked by them. Rather than provide you with examples of how other people use the present to be happier and more successful, it will prove more meaningful for you to discover them for yourself in the coming weeks. The young man said, before I go, can I ask you about the past and the future? Then he focused on what was important now. He knew he needed to make progress on one project. Oh, shoot. I skipped a page. Sorry. I'm going to go back to that. Before I go, can I ask you about the past and the future? The old man responded, we'll get to those important areas later. For now, let's stay in the present. When you are in the present and focus on what is important to you today, you make wonderful discoveries of your own. The young man trusted that the old man knew best and he let go of his concerns about the past and the future. As soon as he did, he felt better. The young man smiled. He knew dealing with just today was simpler and easier. He felt less stressed now and more confident. He knew if he could be in the present just for today, then he could do it on other days. Before he left, the young man wrote down a summary of what he had discovered so far about being in the present. Focus on what is happening at the moment. Appreciate what is right about the situation and build on it. Pay attention to what is important now. He thanked the old man and said he was ready to go to work and to apply what he had discovered. He knew this meant being aware of both the good and the bad in his situation so he could overcome obstacles that might keep him from his enjoying his job and being more successful. The next week at work, the young man reviewed the notes he had taken during his conversations with the old man. Then he sat down to finish a project that had been hanging over his head for a while. He'd been putting it off because he believed it would be difficult to gather all the necessary information. Then he remembered to use what he had learned. He took a moment to be in the present. He took in a deep breath, looked around him, and appreciated what was right now. He realized he may not have been promoted, but he still had his job, despite the challenges his company faced in the marketplace. He focused on what was right about the present moment. He had his health. He enjoyed being in a good work environment that was quiet and well organized. He had still plenty of opportunity to handle these challenges in a way that would earn him recognition. It struck him how easy it was to forget to enjoy what he had right now. Then he focused on what was important now. He knew he needed to make progress on one project and then use that to build his energy and confidence 
to succeed in the next task. He began working through the problems one by one. He ran into a couple of stumbling blocks. However, instead of becoming distracted and working on something else, he stayed in the present. He focused solely on what he needed to do at the moment and kept going. To his amazement, he was finished in a couple of hours. Even though it was a small project, he felt good about the work, knowing he had done a thorough job. He thought, it's been a long time since I've enjoyed my work. Staying in the present is really working for me. The young man proceeded to immerse himself in the job in the weeks that followed, displaying the kind of intensity and focus those around him had rarely seen. Before he applied what he had learned about the present, he used to daydream about meetings, thinking too much about the promotion he hoped it would happen. Now, he knew it was important to be present if he was going to do a good job today. He focused on what's right now and built on it. He knew he might not be able to be in the present every moment of his life, but if he could do it often enough today, he could do it again tomorrow. And each day he spent more time in the present, it would help him just be that much happier and more effective and successful. Now when others spoke, he let go of what he had been thinking about and focused on what they were saying. He made a concerted effort to join in, challenging himself to offer at least one new idea. Before long, his customers and others at work noticed the change in the young man. His old distracted manner changed into a genuine interest in their needs and in what he could do to help them and the organization. In his personal life, his friends noticed the change too. He listened in more carefully to what they said, in the same way the old man had listened to him. At first, he had to work hard to focus on the present and not drift into regret about the past or worry about the future. But as he practiced being in the present, he found it became much easier. As a result of his changed outlook, his work and life improved. His increased passion and commitment caught the attention of his boss, as well as his friends. He was beginning to realize that he was more likely to get promoted when he worked better and really deserved to be rewarded. His resentment toward his boss began to fade, at least at times. Perhaps the most important, he had met a wonderful young woman and was developing a great relationship with her. Everything seemed to be going better for him. The more time he spent in the present, the more he felt alive and in control of his life. He felt more confident, stronger, and more productive. He was appreciative of what he had, was paying attention to what was important now, and most of all, he was enjoying it. No wonder the old man said the present is the best gift you can give himself. After a while, just when he thought he knew how to be in the present, another problem arose. The difficulty began when he was working with someone else on a project for his boss, the other person made little effort and offered few ideas. Rather than talking with the person about pulling their weight or telling the boss about the problem, the young man took on the work himself. Before long, he had fallen behind. Then he missed a deadline. It was an important project and his, bo his boss expressed a disappointment. The young man knew that he had failed. His confidence in his newfound abilities began to slip away. What had gone wrong? He thought he had often been fully absorbed in the present moment. The disappointed young man sat with his shoulders slumped and his head looking down at his desk. He felt tired. He wondered what the old man would do in the same situation. 
uncertain, he returned to talk with the old man. Learning. The old man noticed that the young man looked discouraged, but he greeted the younger man warmly. I've been expecting you. The young man began. You told me that being in the present would help me be happier and more successful at what I do. I work hard at staying in the present and I can already see the good it has done me, but it seems as if it's not enough. I'm not surprised, the old man said. To fully embrace the present, you must do more than just live in the present moment. But I waited for you to discover this for yourself. The old man asked the young man to tell him about the problem and then said, so you reacted to the other person's lack of support by shouldering the burden rather than addressing the problem. Then he asked the young man, haven't you told me before that you've done this same sort of thing before? Yes, the old man admitted. It's because I've always disliked confrontation. My boss told me it's one of the reasons I have trouble with managing and leaning. Then he asked, then he added, and it's not just at work. My old girlfriend said I ignored our problems too. It's one of the reasons we broke up. And every now and then, I think about the promotion I didn't get. I don't know why I'm having such a hard time letting go of that. The old man said, perhaps this will help. It is hard to let go of the past if you have not learned from the past. As soon as you learn and let go, you improve the present today. I like that, the young man said. It makes a lot of sense. Then he asked, do you mind if I change the subject and ask you how you know so much? Well, the old man laughed and said, well, I spent many years working for an interesting organization. I listened to what people were saying about their work and lives. Some were having a difficult time while others were doing well, but I noticed there were common patterns. The young man asked, what did you notice about the people who were having a difficult time? The old man could sense what the young man was going through. It's interesting to see that you did not ask first about the people who were doing well. Ouch, the young man said. Ouch is right. You may want to continue why you tend to start with what is wrong and see if that is really working for you. Then the old man continued, I know you're having difficulties, so let's start there, if you like. Many of the people who had the most difficulties were worried about the mistakes they had made or about mistakes they were afraid they might make. The old man said, some were angry about something that had happened to them at work in the past. I know that feeling, replied the young man. The people who were doing well, however, concentrated on the work at that moment. They made mistakes like everybody else, but they were able to learn from them, let go, and move on. They did not talk as much about what was wrong, the old man continued. It seems to me, rather than look at your past and learn from it, you choose to ignore it. Many people avoid looking at the past because they do not want to be troubled by it. They say things like, my past experiences brought me to where I am today. They don't ask themselves where they would be today if they had looked at their past experiences and learned from the things that didn't go well. As a result, they learn little or nothing, the young man said. So like me, they keep making the same mistakes. In those areas, their present is just like their past. Well said, the old man responded. When you do not use your feelings about the past to learn from your experiences, you lose the joy of the present. Once you have truly learned from the past, 
it is easier to enjoy the present. While it is true that one must not live in the past, for then you are not living in the, in the present, it is important to use the past to learn from your mistakes. Or if you've done well in the past, look at why and build on in your successes. The old man was confused. He asked, well, when then should I be in the present? And when should I learn from the past? That's a good question, replied the old man. You might find this useful. Anytime you are unhappy in the present and want to enjoy the present more, it is time for you to learn from the past to help our, create our future. Two of the things that can rob you of the joy of the present include your negative thoughts about the past and your negative thoughts about the future, the old man offered. You may find it most helpful to begin by looking first at what you think about the past. We'll get to the future later, the old man promised, the young man said. So anytime I feel something is interfering, interfering with my enjoying the present and doing well, that is the time to look at the past and learn from it. Yes, the old man replied. The time to learn, he confirmed, is any time you feel you want to make the present better than the past and enjoy the present more. When you feel upset or have any other negative feelings about the past that you are interfering with the present, that is when you need to take the time to look at the past and learn from it. The young man asked, why is it a good thing to learn when I'm feeling something negative? The old man answered, because you can use your feelings to teach you. So how do I learn? The old man answered, the best way I know of this is to ask yourself, ask yourself three questions and answer them as honestly and without as much real feeling as you can. One, what happened in the past? Two, what did I learn from it? And three, what can I do differently now? The young man thought for a moment and said, in other words, you look at a mistake you made and how you feel about it. And then you realize how you could change, how you could do things differently. Now, yes, and don't be too hard on yourself. Remember that you did the best you knew how at the time. Now that you know better, you can do better, the young man said. So when you behave in the same way, you get the same results. But when you behave differently, you get different results. The old man said, yes. The good news is the more you learn from the past, the fewer regrets you have, and the more time you have in the present. Before he left, the young man made several more promises. Look at how you feel about what happened in the past. Learn something valuable from it. Use what you have learned to make your work and life more enjoyable today. You cannot change the past, but you can learn from it. When the same situation arises, you can do things differently and become happier and more effective and successful today. On his way to work the next morning, the young man thought about what the old man had said. That day he worked hard at staying fully engaged in the present moment and he looked for opportunities to learn from the past. When the same person once again failed to contribute her part of the task, he talked honestly with him, her about his concerns. At first she seemed to resent and resist the young man's requests. But when they finished their meeting, she was happy that the young man had been honest with her. She understood the need to get the job done right. She even said she looked forward to it. The young man felt good that he had learned from his past experience and had acted differently. In the weeks ahead, drawing on what he had learned, 
the young man became more effective at his job each day. His relationship with others at work improved too. As a result, his boss gave him more responsibility and he was promoted. In his personal life, his relationship with the young woman he was spending more and more time with continued to grow into something that was very important to both of them. For a time, he thrived. However, as he faced the increasing demands on his time that his new position required, he found it difficult to juggle everything successfully. While he remembered to take a deep breath, and when he focused on the present moment, however, that helped a good deal. Nonetheless, he arrived each morning with more and more work to do. He had not developed a daily schedule and was not certain what to work on first. Turning from this project to that, he spent too much time on things that were less important, while more important tasks that needed to have that needed to move along went unattended. Before long, projects spun out of his control. When his boss confronted him, the young man could only throw up his hands at the amount of work he had with too little time to do it. His boss began to wonder if he should have promoted the young man. Discouraged and uncertain about what to do, the young man once again went to visit his friend, the old man, creating. How are you? The old man asked. The young man laughed uneasily and said, well, some days are good, others are not so good. Then he talked about his challenges. I don't understand, the young man said. I've often been fully immersed in the present. People comment about, about my ability to focus so intently on what I'm doing. I have worked at drawing from the past without dwelling on past regrets. I use what I've learned and I can do better now, yet I can't handle everything. Maybe the job is just too big for me. The old man nodded. At the moment, it may be. What you don't realize is that there is one last element of the present you haven't discovered yet. Yes, you are learning from the past and using these lessons to improve the present. And by living more fully in the present, I sense you are more appreciative of the world around you and more effective in it. So you are making great progress. However, what you haven't grasped yet is the importance of the third element, the future. The young man said, but when I live too much in the future, I feel anxious. I know that when I daydream about the house I want to own or the promotions I, hate to, I hope to receive or the family I want to have, I'm not living in the present and I feel lost. The old man said, that's true. While it is not wise to be in the present, for that is how you lose yourself in worry or anxiety, it is indeed wise to help create the future. The best way to make the future better than the present, other than to get lucky, is to help create it. Even if you happen to get lucky, your luck can run out. And that can lead to other problems. So you can't depend on just getting lucky as a way to have a better future. What do you mean by help create the future? The young man wanted to know. And how does creating the future relate to being in the present? Well, we all help create a part of the future, the old man realized, more than we realize. Obviously, no one can control the future. However, what we believe and do today in the present creates an important part of what happens tomorrow. If you have negative thoughts about the present, no. If you have negative thoughts about the future at your life or in your work and your actions are negative today, you create worse results tomorrow. So, the young man said, if what I believe and do today is positive, 
I can create a better tomorrow? Yes, you can depend on it, the old man said. That's the way it works for everyone. Then the old man suggested, if you want to help create the future, begin by being in the present. First, appreciate what is positive about the present right now. Then, imagine what a better future would look like. Make a realistic plan to make it happen, and then do things to help it happen. So the first thing I do is imagine the future. Yes, in detail so it becomes real to you. Next, make a plan. It is your compass. It lets you see where you are going and helps you focus on what you need to do in the present to bring about the future you want. Ah, planning and doing something today to make it happen reduces fear and uncertainty because you are actively taking steps toward future success. You know what you are doing and why you are doing it because you see it leading to the future you envision. You may want to think of it this way. No one can predict or control the future. However, the more clearly you imagine what you want to see happen, plan for it and do something today to help it happen. The less anxious you are in the present and the more the future is known to you. The old man continued, a lack of imagining, planning, and doing, both at work and in our lives, are the most common reasons we fall short of what we could be. The young man asked, so when do I help create the future? The old man said, after you first appreciate the present and respect what you have now, and then, whenever you want to make the future better than the present. The young man asked, and what have you found is the best way to do that? By answering these questions. What is positive about right now, and how does it make me feel? What would a wonderful future look like? What are my plans to make it happen? What am I doing today to help it happen? The more clearly you paint a sensible picture of the future you want and believe it is possible, the easier it is to create your plan. Once you have a plan, you can revise it as you gain more information and experience. So it becomes a living plan, which is more flexible, reasonable, and achievable. The important thing is to do something each day, even if you think it is a small thing, to help you make that wonderful future happen. The young man wrote, beginning today, picture what a wonderful future would look like. Make a realistic plan and do things to help it happen. A light shone in the young man's eyes. Those three steps are very useful. When I don't do those things, I lose my way. I'm more likely to spend time on things that don't matter and leave less time for the things that really need my attention. I'm beginning to see now. That's why I'm feeling so overwhelmed. I don't take the time to imagine and plan and then work my plan, the old man suggested. You may want to think of the three parts of the present as a tripod supporting a valuable cam camera, perfectly balanced by its three supporting legs. Be in the present, learn from the past, and help create the future. Remove one leg and the tripod topples over, but supported by all three, it works. And so will your work and life. However, if you are not in the present, you will not be aware of what is going on. If you have not learned from the past, you are not ready to create the future. And if you have no plan for the future, you are adrift. When you balance your work and life 
on a tripod of the present, the past, and the future, you get a much clearer picture and you can deal better with whatever comes along. Reflecting on what the old man had told him, the young man returned to work more excited and with more clarity. Each morning, he imagined what he wanted to see happen and planned his day while remaining flexible enough to handle the day's surprises. He set goals for each week and each month. Well, well before meetings, he reviewed what he wanted to accomplish. When informed of his deadline, he set up a schedule with a time for specific tasks. He found himself using the same kind of planning in his personal life. He entered events on his calendar and planned accordingly. When meeting friends, he left extra time to get there. At home and at work, he stopped waiting until the last moment. <clears throat> By imagining the future and planning for it, he enhanced the present and was better able to motivate others and accomplish more. And he had never felt happier and more in command of his life. Over time, his boss, recognizing how effective he was, promoted him again. And perhaps most important, the young man had become engaged and had joined his life partner in imagining and planning their future together. The young man now went to work each day using what he had learned to be in the present often, learn from the past, and help create the future. It was paying off. He was good at his job, had the respect of those he worked with, and was confident he could handle most tasks. Then one day at work, the young man attended a budget meeting. He knew that company sales of their current products were failing. The econ economy had slowed, but he had to admit that some of his competitors were offering better products at lower costs. So he was not surprised when the financial people recommended an across the board cut in pay in costs. That means that meant that he and everyone else would probably lose several people and other important resources. During the meeting, he focused on what was happening. He heard someone say that the bankers had recommended eliminating the expensive research and development area for at least a year. That could save a lot of money quickly. Most of the people at the meeting thought the recommendation would make sense. However, one woman spoke up and said they were not addressing the real problem. She said exactly what the young man had been thinking. Then the young man spoke up. Perhaps our real problem is that our current products are not as good as our competitors. If we cut expenses in R&D, we may save money now. But if we don't invest in ourselves and the development of good new products for the future, the company itself could be in danger of going out of business in a few years. His comments stimulated a strong discussion among the group. Later in the work, in the week, with the support of his boss, the young man collected a report on what customers wanted from their new products. As he began to describe possible new products, he painted a picture of what the company's wonderful future might look like. Over the next few months, several people began to use their imaginations and took actions needed to develop the products customers wanted. While not all of the products lived up to expectations, one became a huge success and the company began to flourish again. The young man was grateful he had learned to help create the future because both he and the organization benefited from it. Over the years, the young man grew into a man. He stayed in touch with the old man who liked knowing that the man was happier and more effective and successful. The man was enjoying both his work and personal life. However, one day the inevitable happened. 
the old man died. His wise voice could no longer be heard. The man was stunned. He did not know how to respond. The funeral that followed was attended by some of the city's leading men and women, as well as by boys and girls from the clubs the old man had sponsored. Many rose to tell extraordinary stories about the man. It seemed he had helped many people. As the man sat and listened, he realized how really extraordinary the old man was. He had made such a difference in so many people's lives. The old man wondered, what could I do to be more like the old man and help others? Searching for answers, the man went back to the neighborhood where he had spent so many happy moments as a boy. Years before, his parents had moved away, and the only times he had returned had been to visit the old man. The old man's house was empty now, a for sale sign planted in the lawn. He eyed the front porch swing where the old man had enjoyed spending his evenings. He walked up on the porch and sat down gingerly on the swing afraid the old change might snap. As he settled back against the warm wooden slats, the only sound he could hear was the creaking of the swing. He thought over all that, the old, that he had learned from the old man. He knew he had, dis had discovered how to enjoy the present. He was now able to stay in the present more often, focusing on what was right now and paying attention to what was important today. And he found it extraordinarily helpful. Whenever he concentrated fully on what he was doing, he was happier and he was certainly more effective and successful. He used what he learned from the past to improve the present. He had not repeated as many previous mistakes. He had discovered that helping to create the future in a positive way could often make the future better. But he still felt that he needed to put it all in perspective, especially now that he no longer had the old man to rely on. The man closed his eyes and gently swung back and forth on the swing, focusing only on the present. He felt peaceful. Gradually, he began to sense the presence of the old man. It was as if the old man was sitting next to him on the porch. He could almost hear the old man's voice, replaying their many conversations. Once again, he explained the wisdom of the old man's words and felt the warmth of the old man's compassion. He wondered why the old man had spent so much time helping him and others to learn about the present. The old man had many demands on his time. Why had he chosen to spend it on sharing the present with others rather than on more self-serving pursuits? The man continued swinging back and forth, eyes closed, now focusing his energy only on this question. Slowly, gradually, the answer began to emerge. The old man did these things because he had a purpose that extended beyond self-gain. His purpose, his reason for getting up in the morning, was to help as many people as possible become happier and more effective and successful at work and in their lives. Everything the old man did, he did knowing what his purpose was. Whether it was sharing what he knew about the present, leading a company meeting, or spending leisure time with his family and friends, the old man worked and lived with purpose. And it was this sense of purpose that tied the present, the past, and the future together and gave his work and life great meaning. The man opened his eyes. This was it. This was the thread that pulled it all together. The present is the gift that gives your work and life meaning. 
the man reached for his notepad. He wrote, living in the present and learning from the past and helping to create the future is not all there is. It is only when you work and live with purpose and respond to what's important about the present, the past, and the future that it all has meaning. The man stopped and looked at the words he had just written. He thought about what they meant. He understood that having a purpose means not just knowing what to do, but why. Working and living with purpose is not some grand scheme or life plan. It is a practical approach for everyday living. It means rising each day and see what meaning it will hold for you and others as a result of your actions. He realized how you respond depends upon your purpose. When you want to be happier and more effective, it is time to be in the present moment. When you want the present to be better than the past, it is time to learn from the past. When you want the future to be better than the present, it is time to help create the future. When you live and work in changing times with a sense of purpose and respond to what is most important today, you are more able to lead manage, support, befriend, and love. The man now realized he needed to create his future without his trusted mentor to guide him. The man wondered if he knew enough. Then he smiled. He knew what the old man would say. The man knew enough. He had enough. He was enough today. Some people choose to receive the present when they are young. Others, when they are in middle age. Some when they are very old. And some people never do. As the man swung on the swing, he chose to return to, return to the present now. He had found his purpose. He would soon share with others what he had discovered. He felt happy and successful. Reflecting on what success was, he knew it meant various things to different people. Success might be having a more peaceful life, doing a better job, enjoying more quality time with friends and families, getting a promotion, being more physically fit, making more money, or simply being a better person who helps others. With what the old man had taught him and what he had discovered through his own experience, he realized being more successful means becoming more of who you are capable of being. Each of us defines ourselves. Each of us defines for ourselves what it means to be more successful. The man realized that he had learned to use the tools that can make anyone's work and life better each day. It was so simple. The present nourished him, aided by the lessons he had learned from the past and the goals he had for the future. And by responding in the present, he became more effective and successful. He focused on what was important now. He was able to see and deal with opportunities and challenges as they came along. And he was able to appreciate his colleagues, family, and friends. He also realized that because he was only human, he would not always be able to stay in the present. He might lose his way from time to time, but when that happened, 
he reminded himself that he could return to the present whenever he wanted to be happier and more effective. The present would always be there for him. He could give himself the gift whenever he chose. The man decided to write down a summary of what he had learned. He would keep it before him on his desk where he could be reminded of it daily. The present. Three ways to use your present moments to enjoy your work and life now. Be in the present. When you want to be happier and more effective, focus on what is right now. Respond to what is important today. Learn from the past. When you want to make the present better than the past, look at what happened in the past. Learn something valuable from it. Do things differently today. Help create the future. When you want to make the future better than the past, imagine what a wonderful future would look like. Make a realistic plan. Do something today to help it happen. Realize your purpose. Explore ways to make your work in life more meaningful. In the years that followed, the man used what he had learned over and over again. He found he was not always able to stay in the present, but by using the present to make himself happy and more successful today, it became more and more a part of his life. The man made adjustments along the way, depending on the situations he faced. He became better and better at what he did. He received many worthy promotions. Eventually, he became the head of his company, a man respected and admired by those who knew him. Being with him made the people around him feel more alive. In his presence, they felt better about themselves. He seemed to listen better than most people, to participate and solve problems and see solutions before anyone else. In his personal life, he had created a loving family. His wife and children cared about him as much as he cared for them. In so many ways, he had become like the old man he so admired. The man enjoyed sharing what he had discovered about the present with others. He knew that many people appreciated the story and learned from it, while others did not. He realized, of course, that it was up to them. One morning, a group of new employees gathered in the man's office. He had a tradition of greeting all new employees personally. A young woman noticed the framed card entitled, The Present, and said, May I ask why you keep that on your desk? Certainly, he responded. What's on the card is the summary of an inspiring and practical story I heard from an amazing man. It's about how to enjoy your work and life. It helps you to be happier and more effective and successful today in the broadest sense of those words. When you use it best, it helps you realize your purpose. I find it's a great help to me, so I keep it near me to remind me to do what works so well. Several people in the group looked over at the card. May I see it? The young woman asked. Of course, the man handed her the framed card. The young woman read it slowly and then passed it to the others. After she read the card, the young woman said, this seems like it could be very helpful in the situation I am dealing with right now. When the framed card was handed back to the man, she said, can we hear the story? The group gathered at the conference table to hear the story. Later, they had a spirited discussion about how they could use the present in their work and lives. Before they left, they each got a copy of the card. Over the next few months, the man noticed that some of the new employees seemed to embrace the present 
Those who did thrived. Others were skeptical or simply put it aside. Sometime later, the young woman who asked about the present re-entered his office. She had taken on more responsibility and seemed to excel at her job. I just want to thank you for the story of the present, she said. I keep my own card near me and refer to it often. It's been invaluable. Then she left the man's office. Over time, the woman shared the story with friends, family, and business colleagues. Many of the people who heard the story prospered, and so did their organizations. And the man was pleased to see that what he had learned from the old man was helping the next generation. Several decades later, the man, now happy, prosperous, and respected, had become an old man himself. His children had grown and had families of their own. His wife had become his best friend and closest companion. Although he had retired from business, the present continued to provide him with abundant energy, and he and his wife devoted themselves generously to other pursuits in the community. One day, a young couple with a little girl moved in down the street. Before long, the family came by to visit. The little girl enjoyed listening to the old man, as she came to call him. It was fun to be with him. There was something special about him, although she didn't know what it was. He seemed happy, and he made her feel happier and better about herself. What makes him so special? She wondered. How could someone so old be so happy? One day she asked him. The old man smiled and he told her about the present. The little girl jumped up with delight. As she ran off to play, the old man heard her exclaim, Wow! I hope someday somebody gives me the present. And so, I offer you the present. Whether you're working to make your future one that is a healthy, physically, spiritually, emotionally, whatever that means to you. But I know that if you're watching the podcast or listening, you have a goal to live a healthier life at a healthier weight. Use the lessons in the book, The Present, and take them into your life and live your best life. Thanks for listening to the book. I hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you all in the new year. Remember, this day and every day, it's your life. It's your health. It's your responsibility. This day and every day.